Hey everyone, welcome back to another Beyond the Lens Workshops screencast. And today I wanted to share a way that you can use the identity plate feature in Lightroom to create really nice looking prints with your name or your logo, or your business information uh, at the bottom of every print, a really nice branding uh, function that makes your prints look really professional. And uh, you can also use that to export your layouts as JPEG files to create the same kind of look online on a web gallery or on an iPad portfolio, for example. Let's, let me just show you the basics of the identity plate, which in its simplest form, the identity plate allows you to change or add this text or any text to the top left hand side of your Lightroom interface right up here. Uh, you can actually use graphic files as well. So if I go into Lightroom preferences, right here you see identity plate setup and you'll get this window where you can type some text in here. So I've already got some text typed in, but if you wanted to add something else or create a new identity plate, I can just type in my name, for example, and I can select it. You have to select it to edit it, change the font. So I'll choose another font here and I'll change it to bold and I'll add a color. Okay. And so we can do something like that. And then you can go ahead and save that as a preset. So I'll click here and I'll hit save as name gray. Cause that's the color I used. Okay. And so now you can see that's the basic use of the identity plate. However, the identity plate is also available in the print module, which gives it a whole other range of uses and functionality that I particularly enjoy. So if I click select this image here, go to the print module. All right. And here I've got basically an eight and a half by 11 uh, setup. And you can see that right here on the right hand side column, right above the print job panel and in the page panel, there is an identity plate section and probably lots of times this is unchecked. So lots of folks don't know that you can actually enable that. But if you turn this on or tick this box, the identity plate function becomes available and you can see right away that the identity plate that I have here automatically pops up on the print here. And I can go ahead and select from my uh, saved identity plates. Okay, so for example, the one that we just created a minute ago, there's the RJR name. And this is simple text, but I can change the scale. I can change the opacity. That's the scale. I can change the opacity to make it kind of transparent, right? I can also change the orientation. So here is 90 degrees in case you're making a, a, a print that is uh, vertical in nature and you haven't adjusted your page, right? I can turn it upside down if I want of course, and then no rotation. All right. That's the identity plate in using text. Now, another powerful feature of it is being able to use graphical files with it or graphics files that you create in Photoshop or similar application. So again, if I click on this tiny little rect uh, triangle here and click on edit, I can now go ahead and add a graphical file. And right here, it allows you to switch from text to a graphical identity plate click on locate file and I have some files that I already created. So let's go in here. Graphics. All right. Here's a logo that I created as a PNG file. Now you want to try to use PNG files because when you create a PNG file, whatever you use as your background for the logo or for the text uh, becomes transparent so that while on a white piece of paper, that's not going to be an issue. If for whatever reason you wanted to place your identity plate over an image or over some other type of color, uh, the white background would disappear. So let me show you what that looks like. Here's what my logo looks like. And you can see that it has a white background. If I hit choose now, it will give you a warning or it's giving me a warning that the file size is very large. That might be the case for using it as a, as a regular identity plate up here in the interface, but for using it to print, uh, you want to use a high resolution file or a large file. So you can just ignore that, say use anyway. You don't even see it here. Okay. Um, but if I hit okay, there is my, my logo now, and I can go ahead and change the opacity and change the scale. And you can see now, as I drag it over the image, the background disappears uh, or becomes transparent. And I just see my logo. And that's again, because I used uh, a PNG file dot PNG file. So this might be useful if you wanted to use it as a watermark or some other special effect. For example, one of my other identity plates is my signature, 
which I scanned in. Now here, this is not a PNG file. Uh, this is probably just a regular Photoshop or TIFF file, and you can see how the white background does not disappear. So if I wanted to actually have this over a print, I would have to go back and save it out as a PNG file. But down here, over uh, the white area of the paper, it works fine. Okay, let's go back to a different logo now. Here's another logo that I have. All right, so that's basically how you can go ahead and use this identity plate when making when making prints. And I can go ahead and save this as a as a template. That's the key here. If you're going to make a series of prints, you can save it as a template. And I'll call this 8.5 by 11 with identity plate and hit create. And now I can come back and recall this layout for future use. So I can always go back and choose a different image. And all I have to do is adjust the identity plate if I want it to line up with the image in case there's a different uh, you know, uh, aspect ratio to the image itself. Now, one other useful feature of the identity plate is, and of the Lightroom print module in general, is that in addition to printing a layout that you create, you can also export it as a JPEG file. And that has several uses from, let's say, uh, setting up your print in a certain way and then having someone else print it for you because it'll export a high res file. Or you can use this as a way to create a nice look for your images with your logo or your business name or what have you, and then export that to share online or create an iPad portfolio or what have you. So let me show you an example of that. If I go right above the identity plate area here, there's another uh, checkbox for page background color. I'll turn that on. And now you see that I have a background on my image and I can change the color of this. Okay, that's a slightly darker gray. And I've also added a border to this. So the border is accessed up here, stroke border, and I've set that to white with uh, whatever size I want. And my identity plate is here, and I'll make that a little bit bigger, or I can even center it if I want. And now you can go ahead and down in the print job area, you can change this from print to printer to JPEG file. And now this will actually export this as a JPEG file. You can uh, set your resolution, you can set the sharpening, you can set the JPEG quality, you can even set the output profile. And in this case, if I'm gonna share it online, almost always you wanna use sRGB. I'll click on print to file, and let's give this a name. And now let's go to the desktop and take a look at what that looks like. All right, and there's uh, there's the file, which has a nice setup and a nice layout and, and really creates a nice presentation. This can also be saved as a preset here so that you can have this for a specific preset for outputting files to JPEG, et cetera. So, all righty, so hope that helps. Any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks for watching.